Because I know everybody thinks they want to buy it and burn it if it's a Baltimore fan. Is it, is it worth it? Okay, if it does end up, let's say, Say let's say you're the buyer, right? And I mean, I guess if you got twenty three thousand dollars to spend and it, it's yours now, do you make a deal with the Orioles to try to recoup the money before they desecrate it and destroy it in the middle of Camden Yards? What do you uh, wait? If, how do you if I buy it? If okay, let's okay, let's just hypothetically say okay. that the three of us morons raised like ten grand a piece and we end up buying the thing. Um, how do we recoup our $30,000? Do we make a deal with somebody? Who would we make the deal with? Um, or would we be okay with burning this son of a bitch at, like out in, I don't know, center field? I think you have, we'd have to roll the dice on uh, popularity. I think we'd have to roll the, you know, it's, it's, we're investing in ourselves. Yeah. That's Just like when we boost a post on Facebook, it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, we could, my only other option would be, is to like buy it and b- being that we're from Baltimore or like we are Maryland based, at least people will be like, oh, they're going to burn it. But if we don't burn it and make a big thing of us not burning it, I have a feeling somebody like Jimmy's or somebody like that would hop in and be like, yo, we'll give you 50 grand to burn it. And we'll be like, oh, yes, absolutely. We'll burn the shit out of it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no and or yeah. Or little, we could little use car salesman on them. Or we could go out, you know, we we could make a deal with, I feel like we would be able to make a deal with somebody and be like, look, uh, how many people think are going to show up to watch this thing burn? Can we get like, uh, I don't know, a, a 10 cents on every dollar of ticket sales? But the other problem is, when are you going to burn it? Do we have to wait for COVID to burn itself out before? Because you, you can't social distance and have a big rally to burn a glove if there's, you, you know, we, a third yeah. of the stadium there. Do you think we could finagle doing it when baseball starts back up at Camden Yards? That would be a great opening day ceremony. Exactly. So this would be Disco Demolition 2.0. And if you guys, for for anyone who isn't familiar, are you guys familiar with Disco Demolition Night? I'm not. Okay. Wow. Saddle up. Story time with Uncle Wesley. Uh, And so, okay. The White Sox for a long, long time, were owned by Bill Veck. It's V-E-E-C-K. I think, it, I think it's still pronounced Veck. And this is crazy times. The hands over ownership to his Wahoo son, uh, Mike, who it, I, I'd be unfair to say he didn't give a fuck about baseball as he did about like baseball as a platform to make more money. And he was always active. He was, a, he, was a, he was a PR guy. He was always doing stunts. He was always doing Wahoo events. He was always on the fucking radio. He encouraged Harry Carey, who before the Cubs uh, was a White Sox announcer, to, go, to get drunk and go out into center field and take a shirt off and, uh, and commentate games from center field with the, with the patrons. You got, I, I'll, I'll show you a picture. I'll dig one up. Anyway. He got this idea. Disco was coming to an end, 1978, 1979. He does a, a two-for-one doubleheader. You buy a ticket, you get two games. In the middle between the, second, uh, between the first and the second game, in center field, uh, if you bring a disco album, we will blow it up in center field. Well, they blew it up. A fucking riot ensued, and they couldn't play the second game uh, because there were so many drunk people just inhabiting the field at Comiskey Park. If we did that... Man, that would be great if we could really be do that again. Yeah, yeah. I actually, now that you finally described it, I th- weren't they like running over disco records in the parking lot with a steamroller and all that kind of stuff too? They, that was part of the uh, that was part of the prep. That was part of like the promotional. Like, let's get people uh, and stuff about uh, you know, say stuff about disco demolition. And one of the things I took from it, old Comiskey could only seat about. Close to 40,000, 39, 40,000. And they said there were probably like 45 to 50 there just College. climbing, climbing fences, okay. 50, 50 cent beers, 50 cent hot dogs. Wow. I just, in a totally unrelated, how many vintage records are, are not in the marketplace? Does that mean that there's some disco albums on vinyl? They're worth like 50 times what they would be because there's like so few because of this stupid event. I, I mean, they're disco, so probably not. But maybe. <laughs> it's 
Let me see if I can. I guess. Get this up here. Hold on. I got a screen share. It's like burning books and saying, yeah, but they were all bad. <laughs> nah, I mean, that's a little different. <laughs> Did you we really see? learn anything from disco? Yes, yeah, so we learned what we don't like. <laughs> yeah. You guys see him here in center field. Uh, there's one. Wow. But this is the, now this is a good one here. If you click on this, um, they used to have pretty much, they had a, they had a uh, shower out because of Chicago, Chicago uh, summer is getting too cold or too, too cold, too hot. Just go ahead and shower yourself off there. Wow. You know, it's just, you realize, <laughs> look at Harry Carey. <laughs> well done, man. And see, that's when you, you start to realize how much freedom has eroded when you do look back at old pictures like this, like, okay, yeah, maybe no one's going to get hit in the head by a flying debris from a pumpkin chunkin shooting <laughs> cannon. But, like, how many freedoms have eroded to where, like, you know, you can't have showers in, an, in the center field of a stadium anymore? 